You might be great on the gram, a king of the keyboard, but if you want to find success in professional wrestling, you're going to have to master in-person networking. And I want to help you to be dangerous in any conversation. I'm Mike Quackenbush, this is Till We Make It. And if you are passionate about the craft of professional wrestling, and you're never done learning all about it, then you've landed in the exact right place, my friend. Go ahead and join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe down below. And I need some algorithm help. So if you could leave a like, that would be wonderful. Today, I want to tackle a trend that I have watched emerge during the social media era of professional wrestling. Because we are no longer in the territory era. We are no longer in the cable TV era. We are in the social media era of professional wrestling. And this is a trend I have seen emerge as a generation has entered the business only during the current era. The trend that I've observed is this one. Pro wrestlers whose experience is confined uniquely to the social media era, they are often very adept at online interactions. They have mastered that part of the game, but they are often lacking when it comes to handling in-person networking, face-to-face -face rapport building, and that is a key part of finding success as a professional wrestler. And the result of this is a growing ineptitude in the newest generation of professional wrestlers to successfully navigate interpersonal interactions. The simple face-to-face -face dialogues that make up a typical day on the job. And this is preventing people from maximizing the ability to grow new relationships or lay the foundation for an expanded personal or professional network. Today's video will address exactly that, and I'm not making this aiming it at someone specific. You know who you are. But if you feel like you are falling behind in that department, then I want to share with and explore with you my tenet, which is be dangerous in any conversation. Yes, dangerous. Here's what I mean by be dangerous in any conversation. You have to be at least a little bit knowledgeable about everything that's going on. And I don't mean everything that's going on in the world at large. I mean quite specifically everything that's going on within the world of professional wrestling. So just to give you an example, let's say that you only pay attention to WWE. Could you have a conversation with someone then about what's going on right now in stardom? Well, no. Or what's happening in AAA? No. If you only watch AEW, would you be able to have a conversation with someone about the current scene in Pro Wrestling Noah? Nope. Or over at Ring of Honor? Nope. And being knowledgeable, that's only half the battle. G.I. Joe! And the other half of the battle is you must be opinionated. You have to have an opinion about what's going on. So if you're backstage somewhere and there's a semicircle of workers standing around having a conversation about what's going on in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and they turn to you and say, hey, who do you think should get the next title shot at Shingo's IWGP world title? You have to have an opinion. Here's why you have to have an opinion on that. Because in that moment, if you turn back to them and say something like, what are you even talking about? Or who cares? Or I don't follow that. You took an opportunity, an open door to connect with other people, maybe to do some networking, maybe just to make a new friend, and you decided to slam it shut. You have to be knowledgeable enough that if that conversation should come your way about who you think should be next in line to challenge Shingo for the belt, you can be dangerous in that conversation. You can say something like, well, a rematch with Osprey, that would be really hot, but you know who I'd love to see in the title picture right now? Jeff Cobb. That guy gets better with every match that he has. And this is Shingo's defining run. I'd love to see the two of them together 
next. What do you guys think? In this example, you are demonstrating that you are both knowledgeable and you are opinionated. You are knowledgeable about the current scene in New Japan Pro Wrestling and you have an opinion that you aren't afraid to share. You are adding something to the conversation. And that's what I'm talking about when I say be dangerous. You have to be both knowledgeable and have an opinion on the matter. But remember, my tenant is not be dangerous in a conversation. It's be dangerous in any conversation. So what if before the show, the whole locker room happens to be chit-chatting about the current angles going on in NXT? Could you add something valuable to that dialogue? Not just stand around with everybody else and silently nod like you know what's going on while not really contributing anything. Can you be dangerous in that conversation? Do you know just enough about what is going on that you could demonstrate that you are knowledgeable about the angles happening right now in NXT and you have an opinion that you are willing to share about that? Because if you can do that, then you are dangerous in the conversation. Now, just to be clear, does this mean you have to know absolutely everything going on all of the time, always? No, not really. I'll give you an example. If someone comes up to you and says, hey, have you been watching that new Heels show over on Stars?" I think it's perfectly acceptable to say something like this. No, you know, I don't have Stars, but I'm interested. I heard Stephen Amell's really good in that show. Have you seen it? Tell me what you think. In that way, you are engaging. You are having a real conversation. Even though you yourself haven't watched the show, you are at least in this example knowledgeable about what Heels is. You know one of the actors in the series. And even just that is half the battle. Let's pick a totally different example. What if someone tries to strike up a conversation with you about the Leyenda de Plata final between Titan and Templario, a match you haven't seen? Well, I think it's totally acceptable to say something like, Oh man, I'm really behind on my CMLL. I don't know the last time I've watched one of their cards, but I've heard Teton is really killing it. Did you see it? What did you think of the tournament this year? In that example, you are showing that you're knowledgeable, right? You know enough to say CMLL. You know that the Leyenda de Plata is one of their key events of the entire calendar year. And you are offering an opinion of sorts. You are putting forth a positive opinion. I've heard Teton is killing it. In this example, I do think you are being dangerous in the conversation. Even if you didn't see the match, you might know nothing about the tournament other than that. Maybe you haven't seen a whole CMLL event in years. And yet, in that example, you are being dangerous in the conversation. You might feel far more adept at navigating these types of interactions when they're confined to the online sphere. But as we all know, that's not where pro wrestling is made. It's made in arenas and venues and locker rooms around the world where you're exchanging handshakes and sweaty bro hugs and maybe masala elbows in a post-pandemic world, and when you're sitting knees to knees with another worker sorting through your creative ideas for that evening's performance. You have to be every bit as adept at those in-person interactions, the ability to grow your personal and professional network while you're out and about as you are when you are safely behind a keyboard. And for that to be true, you need to take the tenet of be dangerous in any conversation to heart. And yes, this means you're going to become a student of the game. You're not just going to watch what you like best. You're not just going to watch what's easy to access. You're not just going to watch the low-hanging fruit that is mass-produced for the lowest common denominator fan out there. You want to be able to demonstrate tastes which are broad and mature. It's going to make you dangerous in any conversation. And if you feel like you don't even know where to begin with things like Mexican Lucha Libre or Japanese Pro Res, well, better dive right into my Starting Point series. You know, it's hard to believe that the Till We Make It project now includes more than 300 videos. So I want to pause here to thank so many of my great patrons who make this possible, like MJ and Sydney. Thanks. And of course, my best dressed patron of all, Alex, thank you very much.